Tamo na live no canal do Batuque já se liga. Alves, André Rossó e Renato Epstein dando prosseguimento ao nosso terceiro dia de entrevistas no Festival Barbatuques de Música Corporal. Hoje a gente vai para os nossos últimos convidados da noite e os convidados são Keith Terry e Evie Lady. São o um casal é, de músicos excepcionais, músicos corporais e grandes amigos é, de São Francisco, Estados Unidos, mais precisamente de Oakland. E são os criadores do International Body Music Festival, um festival mundial de música corporal, do qual o Barbatuques já participou muitas vezes em diversos países do mundo. Eles têm uma relação muito próxima com Barbatuques, é, artística, musical e uma relação pessoal muito forte com todos nós, de amizade, muitas histórias para contar. A entrevista vai ser conduzida em inglês, porque eles ainda não falam português, mas uh, alguns integrantes do Barbatux vão estar no chat conversando também. Uh, caso haja qualquer dúvida, qualquer pergunta, a gente vai estar tá interagindo com vocês também no chat, tá bom? Então, para começar a entrevista, a gente vai mostrar um vídeo que é do, prime... do sétimo é, IBMF, International Body Music Festival, que aconteceu em Bali, na Indonésia. Vamos ver o vídeo? Bora! Vamos lá! Everywhere the International Body Music Festival lands, we collaborate with local communities, and the impact is profound. Excited to be here in Bali to feature Ketchak at the heart of the International Body Music Festival. Intercultural collaboration, the intercultural communication that goes on with the artists when they're all in one place, priceless. Being here is the best opportunity to just not only hang but to share that rhythm that finally brings us back together. With collaboration, we can reduce the possibilities for us to misusing elements of other cultures. That physical human interaction, making rhythms together, making music together, just the oldest form of entertainment needs to happen. This experience has really inspired me. Just loved how everybody worked together. Everybody's just this big family. There's nothing like being a part of a room full of body professionals better than anything you do listening to a track. It's an amazing experience of bringing so many people together in a creative environment. We're really here to share our music with other artists from all over the world and that's so amazing. After really such a long gestation, to see this come together from all the different corners of the world, it's not an experience that one has very frequently. The Balinese culture brings in influences while holding on to their tradition. And so they're very open, but they're also very beautifully knit together. To have everyone from all over the world come together and experience this deep art for ritual, for worship, and for enjoyment is really an incredible experience. Este é o festival. Este é o festival 2015. Internacional de música corporal. Festival de percussão corporal. Oh, <laughs> 
It's so great to see all of you. Bon oh. bon so night. many emotions, so many memories. I know. So many memories. It's very strange. Yes. <laughs> Beautiful <laughs> to watch this video. But Batukis was there in the seventh IBMF in Bali. And it's so yeah. great to watch this video, see everybody. We are now a, a, an IBM family. Yeah. So Definitely. I miss my Could family you... so much. Yeah, we do. Could you tell us uh, how did you get the idea of creating the International Body Music Festival? And how did you choose the groups? Did you already know the, all those groups? How did you get to know the groups, to invite them to take part in the festival? Well, it kind of all started with Barba. <laughs> how did this thing do <laughs> with uh, Keith and Barba? Well, I'd had this fantasy for a long time of a festival uh, that would feature this art form. And at that point, there, there, as far as I know, there had been no other festivals that featured it in this way. And I had, through my travels of working, I had been meeting other body musicians around the world, a lot of mostly traditional artists and some contemporary. And then in 2008, um, with Evie's help, I received a Guggenheim Fellowship, and with it came a lot of money. <laughs> and so, so I used the money to start the festival. And at about that time, I was surfing the internet one night late, and I came across Barbara Tooks. This was in okay. 2000, early 2008, and I was my mind was blown. I just loved <laughs> what you guys were doing. And so the, this was the middle of the night. And it, the next morning, I thought, did I dream this? And <laughs> it's real. And I went back and I looked at it. No, it exists. So, so I figured out how to write to Barba. I sent uh, an email to Barba and said, I, you know, I, I love what you're doing. Can we talk? He responded immediately and said that Stephen Harper, great tab dancer who's in Rio now based in yeah. France, had given Barba uh, one of my videos, my instructional videos, just days before I contacted him, and that he was going to contact me. Connection. So it was this this meeting that was meant to be, and uh, we got to talking. And before I knew, I had come, I came to Brazil to to meet all of you because I I I just had to meet you, yeah. and we had already been talking about the first International Body Music Festival, or actually we had talked about bringing you to present you uh, for your first time in North America. Yeah. Um, and then the idea b just grew of, well, if we're bringing you from Brazil, why don't we have a why festival? Why not have a festival? <laughs> yeah. wow. So we are part of guilty in that. <laughs> Definitely. Right. So what could possibly go wrong? You know? so, <laughs> so it, 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 it grew from there, you know, and your openness and Barbara's openness to come and be a part of this, this, this thing. And before we knew it, you know, I had invited many other groups that I had met, uh, Kekacha in uh, Turkey, uh, the Inuits from Nunavut. Um, well, you know, yeah. the people who were on the, on the festival and it just, it grew, it, it grew into a festival. Um, kind into of a family organically yeah. and very quickly into a family that just kind of kept going and expanding. Mm -hmm. Evie said something very important. It became a family, a global mm. family connected not only by music, but by love. Mm -hmm. And I remember in this festival in Bali, I remember that you gather us around you and said, I'm tired. I can no longer produce it because it's very hard. It's very difficult. And Immediately, everybody said, no, we have to go on. We are part of it and you're going to do this. <laughs> so we sort of uh, went on with the help of other members of this family 
mm-hmm. all around the world. So could you talk a little bit about this family that it became all around the world with the help of everybody that uh, has a strong connection mm-hmm. until, until today? Oh, well, we produced it for the first two years here in the San Francisco Bay Area in California. And the third one you all produced in Sao Paulo, all yeah. over Sao Paulo mm-hmm. was amazing. And just started to gather from there. And we always wanted to kind of trade off with uh, all of these international partners. So we've been Kekicha produced in Istanbul, Turkey. Um, and we were in Bali. Um, Lila Petronio. With, with EYM Dibia in, mm-hmm. in Bali and Ruchina Ballinger. Yeah, and, yeah, uh, Ruchina. Lila Petronio took it on to produce in France, in Paris, yeah. uh, one year the full festival. And we did our 10th festival in uh, Ghana, in West Africa. With Kofi. Wow. Um, yeah. And there were small versions, like in, in, in Greece, Thailand, right. something in, in Germany, so exactly. other editions. Exactly, in Greece and in Italy and Italy, Canada. Yeah. And, and also a smaller version in, in Brazil, in Recife. We did the uh, a, a 48 hour body music marathon. Radio Kachimbao, yeah. Radio, 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 yeah. Radio Kachimbao, exactly. Radio Kachimbao, yeah. Radio Kachimbao. So in various places, we've had these smaller kind of mini fests. Yeah. <laughs> this is so great because um, it's part of everybody's now, every one of us now. This is something that um, um, changed our lives. And uh, my question mm-hmm. is um, how did uh, Barba and uh, the relationship with Barba affected your music, affected the way you make music? Um, I have to say, I think Barbara affected me in so many ways, not just musical. In fact, some, sometimes, close I think friends. Music, sometimes I feel like the musical side was was even less important than the humanity yeah. side with Barba. Um, I mean, he taught me, he, he exposed me to so much in Brazil. He, he exposed me to so much Brazilian music. I mean, he's downloaded so much amazing music on my computer that's still there. <laughs> uh, he, he took me to see this the beautiful graffiti all over Sao Paulo, which I love so much. And, yeah. and, and just, and, and then the whole, I feel like he, he introduced me to the, the many layers of Saudade. Oh, okay. Uh-huh. And, and just a glimpse of, of, of the depth of that and what that means. And um, I come back to that a lot with him. Um, his music, of course, is brilliant, and how he the architecture of his music I, I really appreciated so much of how he he created these structures uh, in the arrangements, and <clears throat> I think that is that musical part of him it had the biggest impact. But like I said, it, it was it was not just music; it was his humanity. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, and he always, when we had a festival, he would come early and stay late. And, so, yeah. <laughs> and he stayed in your home. Yeah. He stayed he with would you. Stay here in our home, out in our studio. He, he would be there for a long time uh, making juice and walking <laughs> around the neighborhood. Juice. Always, always making juice. Always juice making, addicted. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. I think the only time that, that we ever had a little friction was that. I could not keep any fruit in the house that Barbara would not juice. <laughs> Barbara, could, you, could you please stop? <laughs> well, where are those apples I bought this morning? I guess, I guess we have God, some pictures. One of them is uh, with, with Barbara in your kitchen. Could we see those pictures, Bruno? Pictures from Barbara in the kitchen in, in Oakland? You know, the kitchen is always the place where Best everything happens. Place. Place. Yeah. And, and probably he was talking by juiceable things, you know. <laughs> well, where he's Always. standing, where's he standing in the kitchen is right where he would juice. Yeah. <laughs> the counter was right there. And I like you can see everyone is making food. There's Aisha and Osgun Peren from Turkey. And I love yeah. that you know, so there's Timuchin. Timuchin in the back. And yes. we actually, we have a picture of the refrigerator. You, I didn't send to you, but the, the refrigerator just full of food. 
just to keep feeding everybody. It would last two days yeah. to fill up the refrigerator again. But that kitchen was also a place for a lot of music and just jamming. Yeah. And In the parties. This is what I understand about the IBMF family. I mean, we went to the concerts, we played there, we watched the concerts there, and then we went to your home, and then we went on like playing, improvising, and making music together, and talking, and cooking, and having mm -hmm. meals together. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, what else do we have? So this, this one. Is, this is that, from, I think, 2013. San Francisco, um, right? In San Francisco, San Francisco at San Francisco. SF Jazz. San Francisco yes. Jazz Center. Mm -hmm. And behind Barba mm -hmm. is Sudamani. And I give credit uh, to Keith has incredible visions throughout his whole career of music he wants to hear together. It's not yeah. enough to have this music or that music. He wants to hear it all at the same time. <laughs> right. <laughs> so the collaborations were so much a big part. And at first we started with a collaboration with uh, with our groups and Barbatukes. And then he really wanted to, he had a long time collaboration with Indonesians, as you saw in the Bali video, but he really wanted to hear all of this together. And so, so there's part of Sudamani coming to San Francisco. And then I don't, this is not the same year, I think, because it was in 2011 when uh, we were having all these troubles with the visas and the funny story that um, Barba was allowed to come and teach, but he was not allowed to be on the stage. Oh and my gosh. So, well, it, the wording was he was not allowed to appear. Uh, to appear. Yeah. So he performed behind a curtain. He could be there, but he couldn't appear. <laughs> so when he was in the show, it was behind a curtain. So I nobody could see, see him, but the, you could hear him. And everyone oh. knew who it was. <laughs> oh my God. This is incredible. And then we had this collab between Crosspose, Sudamani, and Barbatukis. Mm -hmm. What year was that? Do you remember? Well, we were in Bali. We did it in Bali. No, no. And first, we, no, we, we were in San Francisco. We created the, the collab in San Francisco. We presented. This, we have was, a video. I guess year. we have the body chuck, the second video. Right. Bruno, could we take a look, right. please? It was the same uh, the same year from this photo that we're seeing now. 2013. Yes. 2013.
Oh, oh my heart. Wow. Yeah. Wow. I want to do it again. Let's do it again, 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 again. Again, again. Yes, again. I remember we went to San Francisco. Uh, I guess me, Giba, Barba, Flavia, mm -hmm. Charles. 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 We, yeah. we stayed there for like three weeks. We will stay together yeah. with you mm -hmm. with cross pose and so the mm -hmm. money we created, the piece. Mm -hmm. Presented the piece. This is in San Francisco. What the video we we, we saw yeah. now, and then later we presented again in Bali. Right. It was yeah. at the next year, I think. Right. Was it, was it? It was a year and a half. Yeah. 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 And, um, and I, I remember. Hello. I'm sorry. I, I remember no, how no. was the process. I mean, I agree with Evie when she says like the the vision of Keith and Barbara and Evie as well. To, to mesh up these three groups together. was The results was amazing. And the vibe of the process, every, every day that we woke up to go to the rehearsals, was a joy day, was a, a, a happiness a happiness thing that is unforgettable for us. And every time that we go to the festival, we, we, we don't go out of the festival by the same way that you go in. I mean... <laughs> you're muted wow wow you're muted classic <laughs> and now it's gone classic oh, wow. disappear <laughs> disappear <laughs> 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 a classic. No, the thing that I think is, is amazing is that in this collapse we 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 are affected in so many layers by the music of the other groups like Ketchak is in our lives forever now. Mm -hmm. I mean, we brought like the Maracatu to this collab or the samba and and the uh, cross poles bring uh, uh, the American music. So these influences uh, are mixed in this collabs and then we have this in our music like mm -hmm. forever. This mm -hmm. is something very, very beautiful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I miss it very much. You know, it's just uh, an opportunity to explore musically like that, but then also the opportunity to explore creatively with this group of people, you know, and like yeah. people were saying, just the, the vibe, the feel of, of the process was so special and so rare, you know, it, it, yeah. very special. Jiba, you were saying? <laughs> <laughs> Forget about it. Let, let, let's Never mind. Move. Never mind. <laughs> okay. Now, uh, you have many other projects, Evie and Keith. You have uh, Slamin, Cross Pose, Evie Ladies Band, Motor Dance, and many other projects in which you play sometimes together, sometimes only Keith or only Evie. Mm -hmm. And uh, I would like you to talk a little bit it's, I mean, how how did uh, body music first enter their lives, and then how uh, did you get to create those groups? Um, talk a little bit about those projects, and then we can see the video of slamming and the other ones. Oh, okay. Um, uh, well, I, I'll I guess I'll start. Uh, how okay. I got, how I started doing body music was I was. Yeah with a lot of tap dancers. I'm a drummer, a trap set drummer, and I played all my life. And I was working with uh, tap dancers in the 1970s and the 1980s. And I was in a group called Jazz Tap Ensemble, three tap dancers and a piano trio, piano, bass, and drums. And it was through that group that I got to meet some of the great tap dancers, th that generation, they've all passed on, but Charles Honey Coles, Charles Cookie Cook, the Nicholas Brothers, Sandman Sims, Gregory Hines, is that amazing, amazing dancers. And I was really inspired by them. They created their own soundtrack and a dance. And I loved yeah. that combination so much. And I loved their sensibility. And most, many of them were musicians also, not just tab dancers. Their, their dancing was so musical. 
And so, and this is jazz tap, not like show tap, like Broadway tap, but jazz tap. They're jazz musicians. Their instrument is their feet. So yeah. I had a, I had a moment one day in a rehearsal when I realized I could displace everything I was playing on the drums onto my body. And I stood up and I started playing around mm. with this idea. And there were two dancers, Charles Honeycoles and Charles Cookie Cook. And they both saw what I was doing. And at different times, they took me aside and said, you know, what you're doing, it reminded them of the ham bone, the traditional African-American style of body music that that developed in the States as a result of the slave trade. But what I was doing reminded them of the ham bone that they had done when they were kids and also performed in vaudeville. And they both encouraged me to pursue it. They said, you know, what you're doing, it moves differently, the rhythms are different, and you should pursue this. And so I just took their advice and I'm still pursuing it. And that's how I got well, started. We thank them. <laughs> <laughs> well, I thank them. Yeah. They, they sent me into a direction that I never dreamed of, you know. So and cool. then, you know, no, other, that's so cool. Yeah, other, and Keith, no, uh, you, you were saying about the, the musicality of the tap dancing. Yeah. And I think that was in, in Chicago, the time that I... That Jason, I, uh, Jason, remember? Yeah, yeah I, 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 I was Great tap dancer. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly, because uh, this, this meeting with Jason and that edition of the festival, mm -hmm. uh, in, in the, in the Barbatux concert, I, mm -hmm. I, I was doing a solo and, and I, invite, I invited... Mm -hmm. uh, Jason to do a duo or something like that we did 10, 10 minutes before the, the concert. It was wow. a crazy decision, but I think that worked <laughs> and changed completely my per per perspective of uh, of the musicality because they they was was play he was playing with uh, hey Clay what's up man hi Clay <laughs> sorry to interrupt Clay, but this Clay this boy was, was raised in by the, the IBMF. yes like, like Clay by IBMF. Like a how are you my dear Ah, he doesn't have yeah, the he's phone. not small anymore. He doesn't even fit on the screen. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And so, and Jason, uh, if I remember well, he 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 was playing with a trio, right? A piano, drums, and bass, mm -hmm. double something, and was a, a, a amazing course that you don't get tired of the the language. He's and. Playing with with him cha changed me completely. Yeah, Jason Samuel Smith. Yeah, exactly. Uh, while Clay is here, I'll just say that uh, so much influence for him growing up around all of you people and the whole body music family. And Clay has become a really fine music producer. He's making beats. And yeah. all of these influences come into like... He's been learning all the tools for creating the music that he hears now and he's in his head. And he's about to graduate from high school and Whoa. move to Los Angeles. And so you can find him on Instagram. In Hollywood. Whoa. Call me call me Clay Doe. Call me Clay Doe. Call me okay. Clay Doe. Is oh, Clay. Tag. Oh, Clay. Clay here, I'll put it in here. Great. <laughs> nice to yeah. see you all. So nice to see you. Clay was a small kid and he was in all the, the editions of the IBMF, yeah. always with us in the concerts, after the concerts, in the jams, mm -hmm. always playing with us, always there. Hanging out with your daughters. Yes, I have pictures. <laughs> ah, you have too, yes. And the incredible is that Clay went to our home, stood here for a day or two, and my daughters, they didn't speak English, but they went along like perfectly. <laughs> yeah. Kids we didn't need the, verb, the verbal. Uh, exactly, exactly. So great. Well, I, I, I think of him just be, kind of being raised on love. Yeah. There was always so much love around the festival. Love you know, and music. It's, it's love and music, and yeah, it, it's it's such a great influence to to be to grow up in. You know. Yeah. I, I see and, that influence in him. And this is something that I've noticed because you were a family. You mean, even Keith, you were a couple, and you have Clay, and you were always together. There's a, a mix, and it's together work or the the music, the profession, and 
your life as a couple, as a family. So the private life is together with the. How does it work? What's the <laughs> I'm not sure. Do you have any partners that know? We go until here and then. No. <clears throat> Well, we were really lucky that, honestly, Clay was a pretty easy kid. And then yeah. I also find traveling as a family, especially with a child, it opens a lot of doors. So mm -hmm. many people, they see you as more human when you have a child with you. And especially in places like Africa or in Turkey was tr very true. People, it doesn't matter the language. Everyone understands the language of children and food. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And so I, I felt like it just, um, instead of seeing us as American, it could see us more as people. And, and I really like that. And he was, he was very easy and flexible. We were lucky with that. And everyone in the body music family felt very safe and so many amazing role models. And I have to say, especially men who dance and play and they are strong and also soft and all of this is like such an amazing you know to have like to have barba in our house for one month always making juice for clay yeah. and have that combination of of feelings of you know the music and the work and the play and it all being it's like it's like things used to be you know a long time ago when we lived in villages together and so yeah I feel like I'm always trying to create that environment. Of connection, yes. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Okay. Beautiful. And Evie, how did body percussion first enter your life? Ah. I know you were also a tap dancer and tell us about it. Bye, Bye. Clay. <laughs> tell him we were saying I think you've heard this Come story back before. Later. <laughs> <laughs> I love him. Thanks for coming in. Yeah. Um, I actually started, my family was really involved with traditional American music, like fiddle, banjo, guitar, um, playing old time string band music. And that music was the first combination of white, black, and brown in the American South, in North America, in the South, uh, you know, through the history of slavery and all of that. It's a very difficult history, but created this new music. And that's the music that I grew up playing. I started on the banjo but also with uh, clogging, which is the grandmother of tap dance. And so, um, and my mother also, she taught international folk dance. So from Eastern Europe and from different places. So she was a dance teacher, teaching groups of people how to dance together, do folk dance. And we were always going to, uh, to like a music party or having people who were traveling through come and stay in our house. So. We really grew up with this kind of more traditional idea of music and dance, that it was just what people do when they come together. Um, square dancing, uh, playing the banjo, clogging, doing all this interaction together. And the traditional body music style of hambone is a part of that Southern tradition and more in the African-American tradition that comes from uh, enslaved people having their drums taken away and they put the rhythms on their bodies. And so that was all part of the tradition I learned when I was very young. And when I was a teenager, I was introduced to uh, rhythms from Ghana, from West Africa. And I just had this light bulb that it was so much a part of the music that I grew up with, which in even in this country, people think of it's very Anglo, very associated with the South and with white culture but it was very much also a part of black culture and native culture, but because of the history of racism in our country, uh, it really kind of separated. So something that I love is through this connection, being able to reconnect the music that I grew up with, with the African diaspora roots. And so I was in a dance company called Rhythm in Shoes based in uh, Ohio. And we did a collaboration with Keith Terry and Cross Pulse. Oh. And I was actually about to quit and move to Chicago and study more tap dancing. And they said, would you stay and do this collaboration? So I'm still doing the collaboration. <laughs> 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 so, as they say, the rest is history. <laughs> so 
I have this I have this other world in traditional uh, traditional North American music and dance, and I call square dances, and I write songs, and I play the banjo. And throughout this whole pandemic has actually been great because I've been teaching a lot of students the banjo. Um, but then the percussive dance uh, and the ex exploring percussive movement and that your body making all of the sounds is something that uh, just kind of grew and grew in me and especially through this collaboration. But I also came into it more as a dancer, like first as a dancer that also played music. And so I also I always want to take the music and move it. And so it's been really um, exciting for me, like with that body chalk collaboration, to take all the vocabulary from uh, from Sudamani, from Barbatukis, from uh, Slamin, from Cross Pulse, and really help kind of move the big group around in different, yeah. you know, different arrangements. And then with the group I've been playing with, Motor, really trying to combine all of these things of singing in harmony, having these arrangements and uh, making percussive movement, but then also really having more adventurous choreography, which yeah. is hard to do while you're singing, but yeah. so we, then we make some uh, films so that you know, <laughs> kind of to represent it a little bit better and to spread wider. Yeah, dance and music are very connected in your art. Yes, uh, yeah. it's very connected. Okay, we have some videos. So let's watch. First, we can watch the, the third video, Slamming, uh, which is what, let's watch the video and then we make the comments about it. Okay. <laughs> you guys watching those videos <laughs> great work kenny so, brian steve right right yeah. and De destiny and zoe destiny and zoe mm -hmm. beautiful so uh, we can see in this video that uh, you you there's a lot of improvisation in, right in, in your right. work and we can well, see this structure of a chorus and you improvise and then chorus and then improvisation again so I would like you to talk a little bit about the importance of improvisation in what you do, in your art, in your workshops. How do you develop any improvisation techniques? Tell me uh, about it, please. Well, that that piece was all improvised, and you know you're seeing the end of the piece, but the, basically I'm just calling yeah. people in and out the entire time, um, and so it just happens on stage only. Um, and some pieces are more improvised than others. I mean, there are always rooms for solo. It's very much like jazz. You know, you have a, often you have a structure, but then you can solo within. 
And um, I love improvisation, partly because I have difficulty remembering parts. <laughs> <laughs> and as I get Truth. older, <laughs> I get older, I have more, more and more improvisation, please. Re more improvisation, please. <laughs> okay. So, Especially uh, body music, right, Keith? Because you don't have even a drum set in the end of the night, too. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. I, I will just say that we, uh, Keith moved the drum set into the very middle of the house, in the middle of the living room. <laughs> How great. He, so now, it well, belongs. it's actually okay because sometimes we're all practicing in the same room but playing different music. So. <laughs> <laughs> Now that's improvisation. <laughs> <laughs> Great. We we all do a lot of improvisation in Barbatooks too, uh, right. and it's something that um, I think really I think it contributes to make uh, the world better. Because when you improvise, you have to listen to the other so that exactly. you can play together. It's not something ah, I'm gonna do what I want to do now. No, we have to connect. Right, mm -hmm. right. So it's and something it's, we use a lot. And it's so in the moment that it kind of charges. It gives it a certain kind of energy, too, because yes. it's so pre you have to be so everybody has to be so present. And for yeah. it to work as a group, as yeah. you say, everybody has to really be listening and responding yeah. to that. And I, I love that. And I grew up, you know, playing jazz. So that it's a part of of my training. And you were asking about like teaching and stuff, you know. Yeah. I, I, I often use trades just like in, in jazz, you know, um, but in terms of improvisation, uh, I, I don't teach, quote, improvisation myself. But what I try to do is teach tools that then can be used to create, you know, that, the, that, that my students can use the tools to put, the, put rhythms together in different ways to compose and to create. And as they have more facility, you know, they have more technique, they can use the same thing in improvisation. They draw from that technique and then to express their ideas in the moment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you, you give many workshops all around the world, yeah? Do you, 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 do you feel differences between the people, I mean, in Bali, in Africa, in Brazil, in Europe. Uh, can you talk a little bit about it, the, the teaching experience? Oh, yeah. It, it is really different from culture to culture, you know, how, how rhythm plays out. And, you know, I mean, and, and just conceptually how things work, you know, like in, in flamenco and in Indonesian music, The, the accent is at the end of the phrase rather than at the beginning of a phrase. So you may have a four bar or eight bar, 16 bar phrase. And you may remember this from the collaboration of Body Chalk. Yeah. But if you were to go, okay, <laughs> say, okay, I'm going to get four counts and we'll start. You know, then I go one, two, three. All the <laughs> Indonesians would come in on four. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and everyone uh, else yeah. comes in on the next one. And it's like, you want to begin, but it already starts. <laughs> exactly. You know, so you realize, oh, we really think about this music so differently. Yeah, so very but different. also in a in a class traveling around, you know, there are some cultures where everyone wants to write everything down and some cultures where they spend the whole time laughing. You know, <laughs> it's like, it's just a different vibe everywhere you go. How great. Yeah. And yeah. then there are people who are always asking, well, where's the one? <laughs> how, do you, how do you count? How do you count? And people who doesn't care about yeah, you. Yeah, like, I have no one. idea. Other places yeah. don't care. I don't right? care. Yeah. I'm living the present. Right, yeah. right, right. I, I love those differences, though, because yeah. it, yeah. it, it, Again, it just makes me feel very human, you know, to and alive, yeah, and, and alive, you know, to yeah. realize that we we conceptualize these things, we hear them differently, you know. It's and and I love that. I just love that about being human. How great! Okay, now I would like to to show a video of a motor dance, a video of Evie Ladies. Let's let's watch it, and then we can talk a little bit about it about this beautiful project. I 
Okay, this is this is wow. an excerpt. You can watch the whole video in Evie's channel. What's the, the name? <laughs> Evie Lady, your channel in YouTube. Mm -hmm. Evie Lady. So you go yeah. to YouTube to watch the whole video because it's beautiful. Wow, it's beautiful. wow, wow. Beautiful. So, so beautiful. It's beautiful. Beautiful. I could you. see Nuria there. Nuria is part of the group. Mm -hmm. And Valerie, yeah. who is cooking for the festival. She's inside oh, the group. Valerie. And Valerie and I Faye. Remember Faye. remember Faye. I miss Faye. I miss. <laughs> if, okay. How many people in the group? How in the group? Uh, yeah. It's between 9 and 12. Uh, right now, it's about 8 or 9 people. If it's a group yeah. formed exclusively by women, what's the importance to have a group formed by women? You know, I, I, it's funny because for many years I was in a band of all women called the Stairwell Sisters, a music band. And there's something nice about just being with women. Um, everyone really takes care of each other in a kind of way. And this motor dance started after the festival with Valerie and Nuria to, we were exploring some new ideas and it just, some other women joined. And then at one point I said, I asked them, do you want to keep it women or no? And they said, yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> they wanted just okay. this space. And so the work itself has grown also into a, 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 there's a lot of feminine expression in it and how we do the movement and the, the way the arrangements are. It's just how it worked out, but then they like it like that. So it was think, organic. It was, it was very organic. Yeah. And were all the girls already into body music or not? You know, I, I collected people from different places, you know, like there is uh, a woman who did a lot of hula hoop, you know, she did hoop dancing, but What's I was hula watching. Hoop? I don't know what's hula hoop. Do you know around your waist? Ah, like, okay. Yeah, bambole. I don't know what you call it. Bambole. 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 Okay, Portuguese is bambole. Okay. Yeah, okay. Bambole. So um, she was, this was what she did, but I could see that she had this rhythm and I asked if she could sing. I mean, these skills, as you know, it's not natural for everyone to play and sing and dance all at the same time. So yeah. some people were more singers and some people more dancers. Um, and each one is like learning the other side. Okay, this is this is a collaboration too. This is great. Yeah. 
Beautiful. And uh, you have this project, Evil Ladies Band, in which Keith yeah. takes part also. You are a trio. And in this group, you have a, a bass player. Yeah. yeah? Um, so th there's a classical instrument there, a traditional instrument that you, you, you mix there. Is it different? Well, the the bass is really common in the string band music that I grew up playing. So we have banjo and guitar and bass. Keith also plays some cajon. We do some dancing. But the band is really, it's a showcase more for my songwriting. Uh -huh. um, so I always joke that I work with Keith in, the, you know, the word lucrative. Yeah. Like Look at in Portuguese. Yes, we know very much. Same. So I joke that yeah. I work with Keith in the very lucrative body music world. And he works with me <laughs> in the same lucrative uh, folk music world. So <laughs> with uh, the diversity of experience, it makes an interesting life and maybe even more possible career just by being able to do different things. But you all also do different things. Hello, yeah. I know you have a band and you all yeah. play instruments play and guitar, yeah. Yeah. And Hosoya, Everything is together. Your own work and Jiba too. Yeah. Yeah, everybody. So yeah. I guess I, I think Keith is the only one who maybe lives by body music alone. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Let's no, see the video. He's playing he plays bass in the band. I play bass in the band, but not yeah, in the Yeah, but in, not in, in the, the video. video. Right. Yeah. In the video, Eric plays bass, so I can yeah. do body music. So. Because you could you couldn't play the bass and do body music at the same time, so I'm, you had to I'm make a choice. Working, I'm still working on that. Working on it. <laughs> I know he's okay. clapping. Let's watch the video then. Evie Ladies okay. Band. The hardest thing, what do you do when this world is just too big for you? Walking in a straight line. The hardest thing there is to be is all right with reality. Walking, Walking in a straight line. I'm used to it. My generation, we were told we could have it all, never grow old. Walking in a straight line. Walking in a straight line. But now I'm grown and so I know that taking care of business is how it goes. Walking in a straight line. Walking in a straight line. I'm used to it. Amazing video. Yeah, that was so uh, guys, our 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 longtime collaborator Andrew Reisiger put that video together beautifully. I gave him one yes. idea, but he came with like the full thing. It's beautiful. He also, no, he didn't do the Bali video. He was in no. Africa with us. No, he was in Africa with us though uh, for IBMF, and he's done so many of the promo pieces for IBMF over the years. He's a great, great artist. Thing. Beautiful. Yeah. Yes. Beautiful. And he's working Arab. on. He's working on the documentary, the first 10 years of the IBMF. Wow. We hope, we so, will hope will be out next year. Well, I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. 
And I'll just say there are so many videos either on my channel, Evie Layden, or on Body Music Festival too. And we're going to start releasing some videos from the early festivals um, to start putting out more because <laughs> we spend all this time making new things and we just, we move on, we move on and we forget <laughs> like so many people haven't seen you yeah. know, so many of the things as, as we go. It would be so good. So now's the time for catching up. Okay. Now we are going to the end. I guess Gjiba has a question to, to, to finish. Yeah, actually, I, I, I don't have enough, enough words to thank you guys and, and I remember the first time that Barbara said to me, man, I j just met a guy that's probably, he comes off the same planet that we came. <laughs> so <laughs> uh, obviously it was in a Japanese restaurant after the rehearsal. <laughs> and, and, and I remember how happy he, he, he is the time and how many possibilities the, the, the meeting of you two uh, and, and gave to us to our our of us and all the other artists that that went to the festivals and i really believe that after we we after the end of this pandemic the importance the relevance of the arts uh will take another proportion and that, that that's one thing that would like to ask you uh, how you see the importance, the relevance of body music uh, nowadays uh, in, in this time that we live in, and especially afterwards, this classic. <laughs> no, this is a classic. Whoa! And the more, more, most important, I would like classic to say that. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Bye, Jeepa. <laughs> and now he's gone. And he's gone. <laughs> and he's gone. <laughs> but you know, the most important part was. <laughs> <laughs> and I would like to add that. <laughs> okay, but well, if I can. Uh... About, about this, what's the relevance of body music and the art in general in these days we are living now? This difficult yeah. days the world is facing well, and afterwards <laughs> one of the things that i've been thinking about a lot is i realized as as we've been doing this that so much of our work is to really connect people to one another and to themselves like we are so even now like i'm grateful we can be with you here in this you know over the internet but so many people this is like the only way they interact with people with humanity is through the internet so I'm nervous that people will be afraid, you know, of the physical world, of connecting with each other, um, like dancing with sweaty strangers. And, you know, it will be some time yeah. before we can really, like, not be afraid oh. of each other. So it's, like, even more important, I feel like, with body music to, you can connect through your own body and through a shared musicality with other people is maybe like a first step towards really being able to physically connect with one another is one idea. Yeah. And I, I think just the accessibility is so important to the, the fact that you don't, you know, you don't need additional equipment. You don't, you don't need to be highly trained in order to participate. I mean, yes, you can take, you know, these techniques to extreme levels as we have seen certain people do, yeah. but, but it is accessible. It is accessible. And, it, and it's, it's about that connection that Evie was talking about. I, and I also feel like it's kind of an antidote to the bombardment of technology that we have in all of our lives, no matter where we live. Uh, everybody is on screens. Yeah which separates us it separates us humans it brings us together you know and, <laughs> yeah it's and, the paradox and, well but body music does bring people <coughs> together you know and this kind of yeah. exchange and this kind of sharing of music and, and dance and movement there was some i don't know if you've had a chance to see american utopia david burns uh film no, um, no. so it was a live show that spike lee made into a film 
Whoa. And everyone, it's there's definitely some uh, Brazilian influence in there, but everyone is mobile. And anyway, there was a really good conversation about uh, work that it seems very accessible because it's more pedestrian. People feel like they can have access to it. Um, but this is like a big show that I feel like uh, explained really well, the accessibility of the body music show. We are always with the festival trying to tell people you will feel something. And it's because it's like you feel like you can do it. You have the instrument and you yeah. feel like you can participate. So it makes people feel like so connected, even if they're only in the audience. Yeah, they are part of it. And I think it also, I mean, that that seeing it and, and feeling that accessibility, like you could do it, I think it's also a part of like a cellular memory because this is old music. It's probably the oldest music on the planet before yeah. we were making instruments. And I feel like this triggers, when we see other people do this, it triggers this memory on a cellular level. And it connects- You just have to remember, to way. remember what you forgot. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And you have to show up and do it. Yeah. Uh, pe people in the chat are asking the name of the film. Oh, American, American Utopia. Utopia. American Utopia. David Let's Byrne. Oh, we love David oh, Byrne. Jiba, it, Jiba, it's called. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the name of the film. <laughs> <laughs> my dear friends we have to to go to the end now so i would like to thank you so much mm -hmm. and i can't forget to say that we love you from the bottom of our oh, hearts and let's same. keep together more than ever we are together same same like yeah. forever thank you so much thank muito you. obrigado a todos que estão assistindo obrigado. amanhã tem mais mm -hmm. tomorrow we have mm -hmm. more from the festival obrigada thank you so much love you guys Thank you for having us. Obrigado, obrigado. You take care and obrigado. send my love to your mom, Keith. I will. I okay. will indeed. Thank you so much. Love you guys. Thank you for your families. Yes. Thank you so much. Okay. Bye. Bye. Bye.